Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in last week video, I shared how I 3D printed a frame with a circular cutout so that we can produce a negative that is circular in shape. And with this negative, we can contact print it to get a positive picture that is also circular in shape. Right, uh, some people have shared that they uh, do that by using a mask, that means they will, they will shoot a regular rectangular shape photo. So by using a mask that has a color of a circular or oval shape, right, they can also get a positive image that is a circular or oval in shape. So maybe that's something that I can try in another video. So today I decided to try something different. As you can see here, I have another frame, but this time I have a square cutout, right? So what does this uh, square cutout do? So my intention is to shoot with the Instax Square Film. This is the popular Instax Film from Fujifilm. Uh, this is the Square Series, rather than the Mini or the White Series. And I will put it this way. Uh, in case you don't know, for Fujifilm, we actually expose it on this side, the black side, right? And once processed, the picture will appear on the other side. So if I put the film here and then this frame were to block it, right? So this area will be exposed to light and then we can process it, right? So uh, I'm going to do, try a few things. First of all, I'll try to uh, manually process it. That means I will find a pencil or a roller and try to process it and see how will be the result be. And if that fear, then I will fall back to my Instax uh, Square camera. I do have an Instax Square uh, SQ6 camera. I will load it in the dark and use it to process the film. So do come along with me as I go through this few experiment and then hopefully we'll get some good result. If not, hopefully we'll learn something out of this. Okay, again I will swap out this uh, circular frame. Um, I hope to come up something that's easier to swap without having to unscrew and screw every time I need to change the frame. So we have somebody familiar here, Pikachu, and um, I've used uh, this soft toy before. Okay, so let's take a light meter reading. The ISO of the instep film is ISO 800. Um, kind of high ISO. So at, uh, at 1 over 60, the light meter is giving me a reading of uh, f16 so let's try these settings okay so this is my fujinon uh, 210 mn lens you can see that i set the shutter speed to 1 over 60 and the aperture to f16 this is the black envelope that i make myself it's made from thick uh, black paper so what i'll do is i will uh, take out the film from the instack uh, film cartridge in total darkness and then uh, put one sheet into this black envelope okay, put the frame back and then I put the envelope here so I will proceed to load it through the sleeve So uh, this is my first sheet. I will uh, load it back into this black envelope inside the um, uh, dark room. So this is how it will look like inside it. That means the chemical uh, port is actually at the bottom. So what my intention to do is to roll this pencil over the chemical port, break it and then spread it down the frame and I will roll it over a few times. So, so I can feel that this is where the film is as I um, feel it through the black envelope. So let's start the rowing now. Okay, I row it firmly with a lot of strength. Three times, four times, five times. This is the first time I'm doing this uh, manual processing. So I'm not so sure how well it will work. But I roll it across like five times. Let's open up and see. 
the result. Okay. First look, I think you can tell that the spread is not even. Alright, so this is our first shot. Uh, it didn't turn out too well. But what we can see is that if the chemical spread is done correctly, the image will come out quite nicely. Uh, do bear in mind that this is also expired in step film, but I think we can still see the yellow and the red. So I'll take a second shot. Um, I'm going to try another way. But the lesson learned from shot one is that the chemical spread is not done uh, nicely. Even I have rolled the pencil over quite a few times. So what I've done now is that I have uh, loaded it this way instead. And uh, so that I have more space to um, push the chemical down. And I also make sure that I have to push it very hard with a lot of force so that the chemical will get spread much better. Okay, so I'm ready to do the second exposure processing. So let's go. Right, so the film is here to here. As I can feel it, so the pot is here. So I'm going to roll my pencil down with a lot of force and it, uh, evenly. So let's go. Okay. Right, see, this is what I learned from the first shot. The spread is not even enough, so I need to roll this. I'm not rotating the pencil anymore, I'm just using it as a pusher to push the chemical down. Okay? Hopefully this will turn out to be much better. Oh, okay. So compared to the first shot, uh, I just missed out a spot here. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is the result of the second test. Not as good as I thought it would be because when I opened up um, the black envelope, I saw that the spread was uh, quite nicely done. So I thought it would develop quite well. But end up only um, this one third strip was developed and the rest, in fact this part was totally not developed at all. The next thing I try to do is to instead of using a pencil, I will use this roller and I will do it in the dark. That means I will bring this envelope with the film inside to a uh, dark room, to a, to to a totally uh, dark place and then I will remove the film from the envelope and I will roll it again on a piece of glass in this manner. Right, hopefully this way with uh, a bigger roller and without the envelope uh, in between, it will cause a better development. Okay, so let's try it. Alright, so this is the third print which I roll in the dark without the black envelope and the longer roller. You can see from the back that the spread is more, but again I missed some part. I'm not so sure what is the cause. I did roll it over quite evenly. and But here is the result. I would say that it's much better than the first and the second attempt. Right, in terms of the color. The exposure, I think I got it quite all right. Right, compared to a nicely developed uh, instead, it's still a way off. So what I'm going to do now is to you know, fall back to using the instead camera. Okay, so I thought I will show how I develop the film using the instead camera. Of course, we will do this in total darkness. So just imagine that um, after shooting inside the box camera, I store the index film in this black envelope and I bring this to a dark room total darkness not even safe light and then I will prepare this empty holder so in total darkness I will remove the instead film and I slot it into the cartridge and then I will open up the back of the camera right and so for the film, you must take note that you have to load it this manner with this black surface facing out and then we will load it this way into the camera. All right. okay. So because the back is open, so the camera will think that this is a new cartridge of film. So when you on the camera and you press the shutter button, it will 
try to eject the dark light that come with every new cartridge of film, right? So when you press that, you will eject the the film, and at the same time, process it, right? So if for that case, you do not need to worry about the flash being fire and all that because the camera thinks that this is a dark light, so they just simply eject it. This is how I process the film using my Instax camera. So these are the shots that I've uh, taken today. So this is the first one where I roll it with a pencil, um, partially developed. And then this is the second one, which I thought I pressed harder onto the um, chemical pot. But end up is also like only one third developed. And the third one, I developed this using a roller without the black envelope in the total darkness place and then it was like three quarter developed then i decided to use the intex camera to do the processing instead that means i use the m right and uh, it has very good result very even developing and the whole image is uh, developed nicely Lastly, using the same method i took a portrait of my daughter again equally well developed uh, we have a very nice image and after a few hours the contrast turned out to be quite good right so bear in mind this is just an expired film so but i'm quite happy with the result hi guys thank you for watching to the end of this video as you can see i have uh, not much success uh, when manually processing the film either with a pencil with a roller with black envelope with no black envelope not very successful the best is this one it's about three quarter of the photo get developed only. Uh, I got good success when I load the film into my Instax camera and process it. The film turned out to be very nice. Right? So I must say that the roller mechanism of the Instax camera is very well built. It seems that it's able to break the chemical pot and then um, roll down the chemical very evenly and smoothly to ensure that the entire photo is very well developed. So you may ask why do I bother to do all this using such a big uh, box camera to produce such a small photo that is not even large format, this is probably about medium format. For I myself, I'm just doing this for experimenting, for fun. Fun, I see how other people shoot the Instax film or medium format camera or large format camera. So I thought, why don't I try it with my Afghanistan box camera? So I, I did read online that people have uh, much better success than I did when they manually process the film using a roller. So if you have uh, experience doing that, do share your tips with me. How can I better manually process the film using a roller? And the other thing is that I hope to try this with the Instax white film also. I do not have an Instax white camera, so there's no way I can do the same to process an Instax white uh, film in an Instax camera. So if I could manually process that, that would be good. So if you have any tips to share with me on how to shoot Instax film without Instax camera, how to better manually process it, do leave it in the comment section and, and I will be more than happy to try your suggestions. Okay, and uh, thanks for watching again, so i see you in my next video. Bye! Hi guys, we have come to the end of this video. Please like it, share it, and finally, do subscribe to my channel, and i see you in my next video. Take care, bye!